Do it live! Do it live! We're live! Let's do it! And, we're, ah. and, we, are, and we are live! <laughs> it's like how most of my, oh, my streams start off as like, where, where's the right, where's all the notes? Oh, screw it, we're doing it live! <laughs> right? Live! Wait, are you are you streaming with other people without us behind our back? Would you would you like to join our Atlas stream? I mean, I am playing a game called Atlas. I don't Atlas. know what that is. It's <laughs> so. it's a pirate game. Oh, I run around. I'm yeah, not yeah. A, I'm not... It's a pirate game. What else do I, what else do I play? Huh? <laughs> got to keep uh, gotta the only keep game my, I play uh, is skills. Right. Yeah, the only game I've been playing is Diablo three because they got the the seasonal journeys now and really cool rewards. I like Diablo three. <laughs> I play a lot of Heroes of the Storm, which is like a, I'm, I'm going to call it, it's it's like the the basketball version of, of uh, Diablo. You're five <laughs> on five guys and they all have different, you know, like you have, you have a lot of the characters from Diablo in it and they have a lot of the same skills. Okay. So, but they're on a, but you have like, a, you have things you got to do, like you got to knock down the fort on the other side and you have uh, basically like okay. these legions that meet in the middle and you got to help push your legions over to knock down forts and whatnot. <laughs> but you have the other heroes on the other side trying to stop you and do the same against you. So it's real fun. Yeah. It's World of Warcraft version. has similar stuff like that. Yeah. You had to um, like, capture the flag and whatnot, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Same stuff, just in a MOBA format that plays like Diablo, which I, I'm, but to me, that's just like, ah, oh, because I've been playing Diablo since I was short short way short <laughs> watching my brother on you know for days on end just oh, love the first love the original one yeah i just <sighs> I, I play on well i play online with my friend with my friend kyle you know we just go and we uh we do the the riffs and everything and you know, kick ass the best we can anyway yep i've not yet decided to do hardcore which is where you when you die you die it's over you gotta start over again <laughs> Because I, yeah, I read something I recently that. that made sense to me. <laughs> like I read something recently that made sense to me. It's like video games have an easy mode for a reason, mm -hmm. because they're supposed to be fun. You know, if it's there, there shouldn't be stressful. <laughs> you know, they shouldn't cause stress. Yeah, you know? I, I will admit that there are some games I sit there going, "Why am I playing this on hard? I'm here only for the story," and so I'll crank it down exactly. to you know easy or normal. Like I start games on hard just because. It was Just funny because back like well, like 12 or 14 years ago, normal was hard. And then a lot of games, <laughs> because they're porting them from uh, from consoles to PCs, mm -hmm. they have to account for consoles, controllers. And so with, with a computer, you do have a little more accuracy because of the mouse. You have a little more control over mm -hmm. how your character yeah. runs. So hard is the normal of a console game normally. And uh, it's funny because you start seeing a lot of these cross-platform games where you can play PC players and console players on the same maps. And you'll notice that oh. PC players are usually a lot more accurate with their shots. Um, and so it becomes, it gets it gets weird and fun. It gets weird. Oh, we, well, we had three people. Now we're down to one. Sorry, we scared sorry. you off. <laughs> but but it is, it is, it's close enough. It is a uh, Texas Steampunk Connection. You have found us again. We are coming to you live and in person from our various bunkers and airships. As usual, I am Flavio, and I may or may not be wearing pants. You will never know. <laughs> With me, as always, is Thax and Jack. <laughs> Say hello, hello guys. <laughs> hello. And as usual, we always start off with, what are we drinking tonight? I, of course, have found another stout. <laughs> I've never oh, heard nice. of it. It is Coco Anaha. I know. I can't even pronounce it. Ayejo. <laughs> Ayejo. Yeah. Ayejo. See, Coco no. Ayejo, a coconut milk stout. <laughs> I don't <Ayejo. laughs> Yes. From a, from Hot Fusion Ale Works in Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> it's a Fort Worth beer from Hot well, Fusion. Give us, give us a flavor. Fusion. How's it taste? Well, I'm about to try it now. This will be my first try, my first sip. Mm. Oh, I can smell the coconut. Ooh. Mm. Mm. It's very smooth. And there, there is a coconut flavor to it. I, I like it. I nice. like it. Very smooth and light. Yeah, flavored coffee. Co is it like coffee beer or is it just coconut or, beer? It just says it says coconut milk stout. So man, you know, it sounds good. good. It is very it's very tasty. It's it's very it, it it looks like a dark heavy beer, but it actually tastes pretty light. It's, you know, like a light beer, huh. and not in a bad way. <laughs> you know, it doesn't taste heavy like some of the like some of them do. You know. Yeah. Mm. I like it. What are you drinking, Fax? I am drinking, I'm going to show you the can. You'll notice it 
it's it's printed upside down. It's backwards. It is oh, the top oh. of the can, so I have not opened it so that I can read it to you. <laughs> so you can... <laughs> it's uh, I love it. It comes from uh, the Stone Brewery, which we've talked about before. Um, oh yes, arrogant bastard. And uh, yes. this one's called Huacovenza, spelled with an X, like the Aztec. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Uh, it is an imperial stout inspired by Mexican hot chocolate. <gasps> oh, and, that uh, sounds good. It says it's got uh, chocolate, coffee, pasilla peppers. I don't know what that is. Vanilla, <laughs> cinnamon, and nutmeg. Ooh, and it that is actually sounds interesting. Eight point one percent alcohol, so it's coffee. a little. I mean, Beer. that's the imperial in it. Hey, mine says eight point nine nine percent. Nice. Well, you see so it now. Is, we have, it we shall see. Dark. Oh, that's nice and dark. Yep. Ooh. Makes that funking noise you like in your beer. Dark head. Uh -oh. <laughs> Strong flavors. I, I Strong flavors. Be, okay. Can that be a good thing and a bad thing? The chocolate and cinnamon are very forward. Ooh. Um, it. Yeah, that that's where I'm getting mostly chocolate, cinnamon, and that. Cinnamon. That heavy stout flavor is it's really nice. Nice. Okay. Oh, that sounds uh, sounds like something I would like. <laughs> it was a little Where'd expensive. you get it? Uh I got it at the, the local H E B. But I, okay. I think <laughs> they didn't have it listed at, with a price next to it, and I just thought, eh, I gotta get this. <laughs> I looked at the receipt later, I was like, I spent fourteen dollars for a six pack. Wow. Okay. Okay. Not yeah. an everyday beer, but that's <laughs> This isn't an everyday podcast. You might have to, you might have to invite me over so I can help you finish that six pack for you. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll be there to help you too. We should go to those micro brew pla micro beer places we, we we talked about in the last, previous episode, and you know, there you go. meet up for beer. <laughs> you know, I want to. I oh, know there's so many in Austin. I know. Yeah, I mean, because they're we're... you know they're doing it by appointment, right? A lot of them are doing it by appointment, so you can social distance. You don't have the crowds to worry about. It's just going to be us. It should be fine. Well, if one of those local bars want a good advertising platform, we are willing to do it for free. <laughs> I mean, we will come yeah, out just and we will, we will broadcast <laughs> from it and show off everything that's going on. That's just it's, that's it's just right. an open door policy right now. I'm writing down for us. If, as long as the beer is flowing. We will come. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so, oh well. And what do you? So, what are you drinking, Jack? I'm drinking something very unique. Uh, my brother ran across it when he worked in when he was working for a company that was uh, that had to go to Slovakia fairly often. It was a, uh, they were doing some computer programming and that needed to work with oil companies over in Russia and oil companies here in America, and so that they actually had mm -hmm. to get together and talk computer stuff. Well, he when he was over in Slovakia, he caught the flu, and they don't have oh. they they don't have Nyquil and Dayquil like we're like we're used to over here, <laughs> and so they handed him a bottle of this stuff. It's called oh. Tatra tea, and it's hard to find. It's no longer imported in the United States, so there are still bottles you can find in Austin every now and then. This one is the purple bo bottle, so it is more uh, blueberry, but uh, it is. This one's 62% alcohol, and wow. it is basically, as I say, a strong original from the heart of the Tatra Mountains. It is vodka flavor or vodka steeped in tea, and it is exceedingly delicious. <laughs> By far, one of the most unique things I have ever tasted. Uh, if I had a flask at Steampunk November, um, I may you may have had a little bit of flavor from this. It is one of those things that. Um, I try to show people every now and then when I run into it, just because it's, you don't need a lot. You just need a sip or a, just a smell of it. And it is completely unique. I have not <laughs> run into anything like it and uh, I don't drink it often, but I figured this would be a good time to at least show it off and call your distributors, tell them that you need this stuff because I want more of it in the United States because I don't want to have to go to Slovakia to get myself, you know, NyQuil anymore. <laughs> this stuff is fantastic if you're ill, by the way. Is it, is it the color of NyQuil? 
Um, this one is, oh no, actually it is, it is still brown. I'll see if I can get it up here. It's still kind of a brownish oh, okay. color. Um, but this one has, it's, it, it, it is, it is an herbal tea, but this one is like flavored with like, there's a citrus balance to it, but there's a lot of blueberry in this one. They come with okay. original, which is more of more of a, which is a bountiful amount of different fruity flavors, but it's not overpowering. It's like some, you know, when you get a really good fruit tea. That's not, it doesn't taste fake. It doesn't taste like there's like artificial fruit flavors in the tea, but uh, they, you know, it's just a really okay. good blend of tea. And then just, it makes it a vodka shot. It's, it's thick. It's delicious. It works. Nice. I get it. This awesome. is like the best medication on the planet for like a cold. That's what I'm drinking. Well, perhaps, I, I highly, I highly recommend it. It's not expensive. Next theme book November. Yeah. You don't have to go to Slovakia. This stuff's like 20 bucks. And even comes in this really cool bottle with like uh, this, you know, symbol on it. Ooh, yeah, nice. the, the bottle is even nice. I was hoping it would have more to say on the back here. Let's see here. Strong original from the heart of the Tatra Mountains. Unleash the binding spirit of con of you know, uh, of content. Content. There we are. I'll get it. Yet. With the fusion of black tea and berries, a grasp of the truth and the capture of the spirit of the high of art. All right, so something's lost in translation, but it's hilarious and it sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> something's yeah. lost in translation. It's like, huh? It doesn't. It doesn't read That's off funny. well. But this is actually the blueberry one. It's fantastic in hot chocolate. Oh my god, it's delicious in hot chocolate. <laughs> nice for yeah. those cold steampunk November really nights. Cold, yes. <laughs> Oh, so that's what we're doing. I think, last, I think last time we were there, Thax almost froze to death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was funny that you should mention good there for a while. November, because but for this this pandemic, that would have been last weekend. I know. Yep, it was a sad, sad day. <sighs> okay, moving on. <laughs> Wait, we all take we all take a, just a moment of silence as a remembrance for the moment. Moment of silence. Yes, but this is an audio podcast. We can't be silent for very long. We can't be silent for long. Yes, right. I will take my hat off. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, moving on. So what are we supposed to talk about tonight? <laughs> Did you, like, we, we well, Fax oh, reminded okay. us or messaged us yesterday come, about the, the, the show. Hello? Oh, Hello. we're here. Yeah, we're here. Cujo is a good coffee beer, according to Mike Cujo. Ryder. I thought he was a dog. <laughs> Cujo? Cujo is a dog. <laughs> Different spelling. Or is it Mick? Mick Ryder? He could be a dog, too, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Mick Ryder, sorry. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, so, I don't know if we're going to do our homework today, because we something else came up. Did you watch what we suggested we watched last night, Jack? I got halfway through On it, the, and the then Netflix movie? dinner happened. So, nope. put this Oh, way. halfway through it. So, you got... If, if, if we want to do spoilers, we'll do spoilers tonight, and it's fine. Oh. I will handle it. Oh. Which is... Which there is will okay, be spoilers. All right. <laughs> I don't know. Those people who are watching now, do they want the spoilers? I'm hoping oh, okay. anybody listening to, if they listen to us, they have already know about it because it's been all over the steampunk feeds in Facebook. <laughs> Everyone's this talking is, about it. true. Okay. So it's been out long enough, hopefully. So, really all right, here, a, put this way. It's not really a film that has a lot of surprises, really. No, I, I'm, no. I'm halfway through not and enough. I can already guess what's going to happen at the end, but <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, I, it's... It, I'll admit, is one. It's probably the most beautiful steampunk movie I have seen. I, I agree. Yep. Maybe we're jumping ahead of ourselves. Yep. What are we talking about? Yes, we are. We are jingle, talking about jangle. the new Christmas movie, Jingle Jangle. Yes, Jingle Jangle. I am not usually it came one out for... last week, uh, the thirteenth. So that was yep. just yeah, the thirteenth. Last so week. Is it, are we are we within the the realm of time to spoil stuff? And what, what is your idea on that? I, th I guess we're going to. I'm, I, I'm going to say, if you're listening to us, you're going to talk to us. Rita, we're talking about Jingle Jangle on Netflix. Yep. All right, guys. If you haven't seen and, Jingle well, hello, Jangle, Rita, how you, you doing? Be, and you don't want to be, uh, you know, don't don't listen past this. Go pause this. Go watch it and right. come this, back. This, yeah, there will be spoilers. Yep. Go okay. watch the movie, come back, and then there'll be spoilers. I, I, can, I can read off the uh, Steampunk Explorers description Jingle Jangle without spoiling anything. Perfect. Let's do it. Okay. I, I, I got us ready to, to prime, prime up. Uh, Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey is set to premiere November 13th, which it already has now. Yep. Uh, the musical stars Forrest Whitaker as Victorian-era toy maker 
Jeronicus Jangle, who has fallen on hard times after his apprentice Gustafson, played by Keaton Michael K. Key, excuse me, uh, yeah, stole his prize creations. Newcomer uh, Madeline Mills portrays Jangle's granddaughter Journey, who helps restore his creative spirit. There, that's that's the movie. Wow, I'll admit, it's from a, that perspective, it doesn't give a whole lot away by no means. <laughs> uh, Not at all. Musical, so there's a lot of singy dancey stuff. I don't think of musicals as having a very complex <laughs> plot. Um, you, see that coming? <sighs> you know, it, it, it's kind of one of those. It, it's for kids. So uh, it, it's got a very kid friendly kid focused plot line right yeah i would say it's family Definitely focused sure. because there are there is enough for parents to really catch as well and enjoy so far um, oh, yeah. because as a parent i will I, one thing i love being a parent i'm just going to throw this in is the fact that i can play with legos and no one can judge me not that i really <laughs> care not that i really care because i would still tell people no i'm going to go home and drink you know i'm gonna drink a fifth of rum and play with my legos while watching star wars now i can say hey i'm going to go home <laughs> Have a fifth of rum, play Legos, and drink. You know, watch Star Wars with my child. Now it's not like is the kid drinking rum? <laughs> I yeah, doesn't sound too bad. Kid. But, but from what I see from is, Legos nowadays, they're more—it's more akin to building models because you have this whole set. So you got to build the ship and all this. It's a model kit to me in my head now. You know? They are, but here's the other thing with it: is I am one that will build the model and be like, "All right, it'll be up for a couple months. I'll tear it down and I'll build whatever else out of it." I, I built. I'm I'm one of those that will take it apart. I don't yeah. I don't like to. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's me. And I'll sit there with my kid and we'll watch TV and just build them because I if I don't if I don't do something with my hands while watching TV, I sit there and I just pee, pick at my fingers and it's bad. My hands want oh, to do stuff. Yeah, that's bad. So, <laughs> don't so, don't yeah. them. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> but we digress. Jingle jangle. A Christmas yeah, jingle, story. Yeah, jingle jangle. I personally think it came out a little too early because it's not even Christmas yet. It's not even Thanksgiving yet. Um, by the way, that's next week. <laughs> Thanksgiving is next week. <laughs> but I was gonna, I was gonna try to wait until we, you know, wait till December to watch it and talk about it. But as Tax pointed out, everybody's watching it now. Let's keep current, and it made sense to me, and I, I agree with them completely. So we are trying to stay current. We are talking about the most current thing right now, and it's Jingle Jangle. <laughs> Jingle Jangle. And anyway, originally, I, I mean, I, I liked it. I don't know, you know, being in, you know, 50 something year old man, I don't know if I was the actual target audience. I don't have a family, you know, no grandchildren, <laughs> you know, but, you know, no children, no grandchildren, but it was still enjoyable. Um, it, had no a, it had a really good, um, good cast. It did. Um, yes. As mentioned, yes, it did. Forrest Whitaker, uh, Keenan Michael Key from Key and Peel. I thought and, that um, was probably one of the better roles because i'm like oh, the moment he shows up on screen i'm just like they couldn't pick someone else who has the kind of like stage sarcasm that is necessary for that role <laughs> and also i think um, the, the girl the girl who played his granddaughter was very 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 good she was she was very very good actress but did you say this was her first her first movie that it was yeah, introducing yeah. her when you read that right well, damn good job <laughs> and I'll uh, to that. Richard Rashad. You know, from from uh, the from the Cosby Show. Yeah, Alicia Shaw. Oh, that's who, yeah, show. yeah. I recognize her. Yes, as his so played she, as his daughter. She, played, uh, uh, she that that's a surprise ending, but she plays the the narrator storyteller at the beginning of the mm -hmm. of the film. Oh yeah, I, we we figured that. Ali and I, Lex and I were sitting there just like, mm. I bet she is the the, 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 the kid that it has to be because there are certain things that just kind of roll with it. Like she said, no, that was a very special child. I'm like, ah, no, that, that's a parent talking right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, but uh, what made it, I guess, uh, let's see. What, steampunk, yes, it was. It, I don't know if it was at the time period. It was pretty much looked like it was the time period, but it was you know they had they had like a regular automobile, so a little bit maybe later than than what we. It was Victorian a. Time. It was a mix. A it was a fantasy world. Reimagining world. of a Victorian period, which is, right. uh, I think, you know, very appropriate for for steampunk mm -hmm. and a Christmas story for kids and and that sort of thing. 
Um, yeah. So yeah, I, it was it was I would say very Victorian. Uh, yeah, I, I was about to say it's just I mean there was it's basically a fan it was kind of a fantasy world essentially you know where there were cars existed but I only saw one car it was that lady's mail truck you know so it yeah. they weren't like all over the place. Um, <laughs> But what really made it steampunk was all the clockwork, all the toys that he made, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you know, the focus and everything. It was, you know, everything, everything was clockwork. And the so. magic in the show was imagination mm -hmm. and math. That to me, like, yes, there's a moment where you can see inside what they're doing in their brain, and they're like, they're imagining like all these equations and formulae of how this stuff works. And I'm like, this right here, this is the magic. This is the ether of this show, and uh, mm -hmm. it. it Really and they're, work. And they're talking about like the, the, the powering stuff. I've right. never. And they're talking about like the square root of possible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they use it's... they 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 sort of mystify and and make magical the ideas of mathematics. I don't think yeah. I've ever seen that yeah. effectively done before. Yeah, I, I loved it because I'm sitting there watching this show, going, "the the fantasticness is this is that your imagination and belief." is what's powering these critters. And that's one reason that, all right, from someone who hasn't seen the end, here is my guess of how it ends. The reason that <laughs> Gunther, Gunther, the, the apprentice that runs off, the reason his little flying contraption never completely works is that he doesn't have the belief in it. He's just there, you know, there's something like that. Anyway, that's one reason his always spiral off and don't work. You got to believe, oh, Peter. Too far off. <laughs> That's not actually how that ends up, but okay. Well, that was my guess. <laughs> but so... there is a lot of there is a lot of you. You have to believe to make certain things work. You you uh you are you know tapping into uh an important aspect of the show, of the movie. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Did you get to the part where there was a that that the big eyed robot? They just so... turned it on. They just plugged it in. That's one reason okay. I'm just like, ah, oh, because you got to believe. And now it's working. Okay. And uh, it looks like there might be like, but in, in in the chest cavity, it's like, is there supposed to be four different lights of things that have to turn on? Because uh, in the drawing, in the sketches, it kind of looked like it should have. I don't know. So it was a gear work, really a different point, point, like a heart gear work kind okay. of thing. <laughs> but it was one of those things of like, it didn't work when he was in the room because he was just vehemently against it, believing it working. And the fact that all the toys, like this is the reason, like my theory to me was building up and working was that because it was in the guy's book, the other toy maker was like, well, obviously it's in here. It works. Therefore, the belief was there and he didn't have to like believe in something he was working on. But uh, if that's not part of it, I'm just going to you know, leave that out. <laughs> oh, well, no worries. I, I'm not going to say you're wrong, except for the, the, the one thing his twirly whirly. It didn't work because it was missing um, Soul? a piece that was gyroscopic. Built, that would have been yeah. built by a, a master toy maker, ah, and Geronica gotcha. just never was a master toy maker. That's 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 fair. Um, he was a two bit fake. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why he was the apprentice, but he never stuck around long enough to become to learn well, enough. No, it's to... not the fact he didn't stick around. It's the fact that he was not. He all right. So right at the moment, the key pinnacle moment when he was happy about the thing he made was completely just shunted under the rug and like, no, we'll get to you later. And that, uh, you know, like, if you don't trust and believe and give your give people time and effort, loyalty will just go out the window. And that was the key. Like earlier, like this whole movie wouldn't have happened if earlier he's like, yeah, let's sit down, look at your thing. Or tell you what, let me go do dinner. I'll bring you some dinner. We'll come up here and we'll take the whole thing apart and go over it and see what's wrong. Boom. Whole movie would be good. Yeah, well, that was, I mean, you're I understand right. what you're saying. Yeah, but I mean, that was, that was the flaw of Jingle Jangle. That was his, he was, was well, he was also anxious. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. I mean, later <laughs> I mean, on, plus, he gets... plus, the, plus his latest invention just became real. The little Matador guy. And so yeah. he's really excited about that and going, you know, it was, so the, it was all timing. The timing was terrible for his apprentice to be, you know, hey, look at my thing yeah. that's not working. Help me. Ricky Martin. You know, so it was all bad timing for everybody in that respect, you know. Yeah, the, the uh, robotic Matador who was voiced by Ricky Martin. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that nice. Right, that right here. <laughs> 
Oh, so, she said yeah, that Rita's but, saying the target audience is people who pay for a Netflix subscription. I mean, it's the same as the, the target audience is people who go and pay for Disney movies. I mean, it's the it's obvious that if you have money, then you're the target audience. True. <laughs> I mean, but it got it got us. It got you know. It looked steampunk, so we said, "Hey, we need to watch that." So we, you know, <laughs> and like I said, it's been it was I, I in all the different steampunk feeds in Facebook, they all mentioned it. You know, I don't I don't, I didn't notice it was the same person going to all the feeds, but I know I saw it in all the feeds. Is it so just the steampunk me? world of talking about it? <laughs> Is it just me where the little robot looked like the bad robot? For the company logo, of bad robot that does like oh yeah game. yeah it's like when I saw it, I'm like <laughs> bad robot. <laughs> I didn't notice, but yeah, now that I think about it, you're right. <laughs> Bad robot. She's like, did he have a did they, I quick turn to I turn to Lex? Does he have anything to do with this? And she's like, let me say, no. Like, no, because if it did, we'd have a bad robot at the beginning of the movie. Such a bad robot. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. But it was, I mean, but it, when it came down to it, it was it was it was a good movie. And oh well, I guess we we can't go without saying the, the 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 out the the wardrobes of everybody were awesome. Oh, um, the costumes were freaking it, amazing! I will watch it again yes. just to, just to look at those costumes and and wish that I had three of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I come to I come to realize that the the the, the tall the, the tall hats that they the tall hats they go best with long coats <laughs> or tails. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. They reason. really do. The uh, cutaway coats or the long mm -hmm. uh, coats uh, and the top hats. So, so matching ones. They have yeah. to be matching ones. Matching. So sharp. Matching. Definitely matching. <laughs> but yeah, everything was. It was. It was very, very colorful. Like you said, you met before we started, no one was wearing. Nobody was wearing brown, really. Um, yeah. I think yeah. maybe steampunk. Steampunk is, look, is us who found brown. Not anymore. Not in this show. <laughs> oh my god. Not gosh. this show. Right. <laughs> The jackets, like that that plaid jacket was fantastic. The purple used, the vibrant blues, the like, the pantaloons, yep. and, like everything was different color. I'm like it looks almost mismatched, but it works well. And like this right here is going to reinvigor steampunk in everyone's costumes because now it's yep. it it was it shows that those those colors do work, and I'm very happy with it. And a lot of plaids. There are there were a lot yeah. of. A lot of plaid suiting in in the gar in the the fabrics they chose, and they they looked. I mean, Brilliant. you already said it. They looked amazing. Um, wow, yeah. Even yeah, we got up uh, our game. We got up our game, guys. <laughs> I, I, your your jacket's getting there. I mean, your jacket. Both of y'all stuff is already starting to look better. Yeah, all that. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, that's why I decided to wear it again today. Just, I, I wore it last week, or not last week, but last time. But that's why I decided to wear it today because it was very colorful, <laughs> and I was in a colorful mode. And the you fact know, but I figured not. Cool this this outside. hat goes better with it, I think. Now that it's getting cool outside, we can actually wear clothes. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, this yeah, is Texas. Even, it's really hard to be. A, it's really hard to be a steampunk in Texas. <laughs> um, even uh, when Jeronica's Jangle is reintroduced as the the older character who's lost his mojo, right? Mm -hmm. And he, he's downtrodden. Mm -hmm. He's not a toy maker anymore. He's a, a thrift he's a pawn shop, shop owner. owner. Pawn shop owner. Pawn shop. <laughs> And and they're sort of dressing him down and trying to make him look bedraggled. He still looks good. Yeah. He still like, looks yeah. good. Yeah. No anything. It just looks maybe a shade darker, but it doesn't look yeah. dirty. It doesn't look like he's messing around in a pawn shop that doesn't get dusted. <laughs> that pawn shop is way too organized and way too like clean and not like claustrophobic. I know they gotta do dance numbers in it, so I get it but uh but there there was definitely like oh we're gonna hang like a whole bunch of like frames over here on the banister we're gonna like stack a bunch of stuff here we're gonna have him during the dance number hold this like as he as he like screams out um and, um was it a uh what do, you, what do you call it when something's completely so valuable it's you know it's it's, pri it's priceless antique and it's just priceless. like it's, it's like the statue of a dog you know it's like something you obviously have found at a uh 
or at a uh, pawn shop somewhere. Uh, and so I, I love the fact that the detailing in this show is so well done and that gears are so prominent, but it doesn't look like they were glued mm -hmm. on. I mean, there is there is an aesthetic gear used like in the hair pieces and like glitter and whatnot, yes. which I'm like, yes, I saw that. Yeah, that works because it's it's meant it's meant to be there and it's done well. It's not. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, I went to I went to Hobby Lobby, bought these wooden gears, spray painted them and just glued them haphazardly on something and said, ta da, which I know we all. Yeah, I mean, I think I saw some brooches that were gears, and like, yeah, the girl, the, the girl, um, Journey had the the hair pieces and the, with, with gears them, and you know, it's, it's just it's it's aesthetics and like you know, jewelry essentially, which is nothing wrong with that, you know. Yeah, but they're not just slapped on anywhere. Uh, right. Uh, exactly. So you mentioned you mentioned the one uh, internal combustion car in the show at mm -hmm. some point. It doesn't have any gears on it. That wouldn't make exactly. any sense. It's just a car. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> but like the book and itself, she was, uh, like, she... it was like the toy maker wanted to make things look good. And so like the, the book that she's reading from, you know, you mentioned the name where mm -hmm. she touches it. It starts all like unlocking itself in a very beautiful way. It's like they knew when to use gears. The people who wrote, the people who designed the sets and the, and the props for steampunk they or they at least knew enough oh definitely yeah. i mean it was it was definitely his version of a of like a pop-up book for you know yeah. but it was with gears and they, you know mm -hmm. they pop up in a certain way and do certain things you know <laughs> but, game of gears it was cool like the game of, it was like the game of thrones opening but with the but with gears right I, I'm, exactly <laughs> well, that's kind of taking over like the whole uh mechanical i don't know how they like it, the mechanical aesthetic of things versus uh, digital or it, I know it's digital, but it looks like it could like you, you know, it, there was anyway, moving on. It looked like I'm it could like, actually work. If they, if they built it, it would actually work kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't know. I mean, we can, I guess, I mean, what else can we talk about? There's a lot more to this movie. There was a little bit yeah. of adventure thrown in when they went to go get the, when the robot was stolen, they had to go get it back. The, you know, the children went on an adventure to, to get it back. You Since know. we're talking about fashion, I don't want to move away from there quite yet. Um, <clears throat> we haven't mentioned the obvious, but uh, Jingle Jangle a Christmas Journey is is a, a film uh, with mostly African American actors. There's like maybe mm -hmm. one white guy, um, which is the sheriff too, only important because I want to bring up this Variety article uh, about the hairstyles. Uh, that they they put the black actors in that uh, they were amazing hairstyles and they they could have easily just done strange things that we've never seen before but this is very interesting i'm going to read from the article okay. uh angle of christmas so journey means... from director david e talbert and john legend oh, oh. wait my head, yeah uh john legend's uh get lifted film company is among an increasing number of new Christmas movies that revolve around black characters. Hair and makeup designer Sharon Martin went to great lengths to reimagine the look of the black hairstyles in the family's film set against the backdrop of Victorian England. And uh, it says, uh, Martin aimed to portray the women in the film, particularly Grandma, played by Felicia Rashad, as one of the ladies who looked smart, who went to church and went to see their family, as opposed to how we typically see black women in films from that era in slave roles and not celebrated. Uh, the designer had worked on films, including Dr. Strange, started uh, researching rare photos of black people in Victorian England and uh, building on the basic shapes and styles that she saw. Uh, so it goes on. But I thought that's so cool. Uh-oh. You there? Okay. Yeah, we're it's here. so cool that um, <laughs> they they are using Victorian uh, African American hairstyles in the show, and they, they look, yeah, it's they perfect. Look really cool. Uh, they, yeah. they were uh, yeah, natural hairstyles, uh, uh, Afro hairstyles, but then with parts and and shaped in ways that we we never see now. Yeah. That, um, which is a shame because uh, they were really interesting. 
Really? I, I really do like the, like, it felt like it was real enough that people could do it now. And it didn't look like it was too far oh, yeah. out of, it, it looked like it would be completely acceptable and nearly anywhere. And that was something I'm very happy to see. Like, I want people. I want people to do more with their hair. I'm tired of this whole like 1960s businessman look that everyone has to have. Well, I don't, I don't have any hair to do anything with. You're, ro- you're rocking. <laughs> but if I did have hair, it's, it's not. It's not. It doesn't look nearly as nice. <laughs> when I let it grow out, it doesn't look anything like Picard's. <laughs> well, you just put you in a wig. You, yeah, they, just put a wig on. So many things. <laughs> <laughs> if I would like, if I did, I'd like to be like Forrest Whitaker's hair. I mean, the, the it, it was kind of like the mad scientist look as well, with the hair sticking up all over the place. You know, kind of a little bit. I like that. So what you do is put on a wig and then just stick your stick a fork in an outlet and uh, then get some hairspray. <laughs> oh, perfect. I'll I'll get right on that. Okay. <laughs> Although I haven't I thought about this, up. like for costuming, I can I can actually go with wigs now for just for costuming in general, you know, just if I wanted to do something crazy, you know. Yep, I have to think about that. Hmm. <laughs> so, so far visually, what was the favorite your favorite part? Oh, visually. Um... I have to say it was when the book was opening with all the gears moving and, and you know, coming up, coming out, coming up, you know, and mm-hmm. like a pop up book. Like I said, that that it was really, awesome. Really I like the way that looks. When you first start the show, you're like, well, I, I heard this was a steampunk movie. Where, where is the steampunk? Oh, oh, you have my full attention. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, beautiful book. <laughs> you hit me with a, you hit me with a gear book. OK, we're good. Moving on. <laughs> what about you? What was yours? I mean, as as far as visual appeal and just like pow, um, probably one of the one of the dance routines where everybody's out there dancing and mm. you get to see all the costumes and uh, um, that sort of thing. There's that, a few of those, really yeah. Popped for me, but there was this other point. I don't know that it was necessarily the most visually appealing. But uh, when Journey, the little girl, is, uh, I think she's being introduced as a character um, and sort of working in her, in her room at home. Uh, mm-hmm. She's wearing this, this leather harness with tools on one side. And I was yes. like, what is that? I want that. I know, right? <laughs> Oh, that reminds me. There was a, a point where Forrest Whitaker went, in, or where well, well, the younger guy, not not actually Forrest Whitaker, but the younger guy, where he goes into his his um, lab, and this thing just drops down and puts the apron oh. on him. It's like that at was that, cool. At that point, in the show, um, my wife uh, Lex and I were looking at it, going, "This is the perfect steampunk movie for the same reason that you notice that when technology was making things easier for people, not just there as being an aesthetic to set the, to sets the stage. Yeah. Like it, really fixed it had a use. It had uses. And it would, did it beautifully. But yeah, I mean, so, I think like some of the girl, it was a leather, I think it was basically a smock with pockets, yeah. you know, on the side. I mean, that shouldn't be too difficult. It was you know? a leather thing with straps. And yeah, it was, it was very simple done. I've seen some yeah. people wear stuff like that in the, in the world. In the it it kind of looked like a, uh, um, gun harness. Yeah, but but only on one side. It, it had like a, a thicker uh, leather sh- strap with places for tools, and then the other mm-hmm. the other strap was narrow, so mm-hmm. with uh, asymmetrical. Very much like always a, neat. Very much like a gun harness, holster. a gun holster. Yeah, <laughs> easily within reach. Um, I need I need that for my I need that for my job now because mm-hmm. <laughs> I need I need tools. You know? Yeah, my brother and I we've been kind of he he works he works a lot with tools these days, and so he's been kind of figuring out what's the best way to carry his like everyday tools, like the things if he just needs to mm-hmm. walk before he realizes he needs a special tool, can he fix it with his other stuff? He walks over. He found this little pouch. It's about this big, and it carry and it has like and it hooks on your belt. You put your belt loop through it. And yeah, I have one of those. Pocket, and it's got like three little tiny pockets and whatnot. And he's like, these mm-hmm. things are perfect because it holds all your screwdrivers yep. that you use all the time. It uses the two or three other little tools. And it, and it's not mm-hmm. bulky like a bag. And it, you, if you need something else, you have it at the truck. 
and you can go get it. Exactly. But that's exactly what I wear for my current job now is one of those belt belt ones that you're talking about. So, yeah. but that'd still be cooler to have it up here <laughs> on my on a on a on a chest yeah. harness when you're or whatever. On a job and you're kneeling down and you're moving around on the ground. I imagine that little pouch actually kind of gets more in the way. Sometimes it does. Yes, it. Yes, it does. And, and Although I have right one has a better here. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I'm, I found a new one that doesn't that doesn't flop around as much. But the one I used to have, yeah, it would flop around and sometimes now is not as bad, but it still it gets in the way. Exactly. <laughs> as for I mean, I, I'm going to say I'm going to talk about the songs. Um, first off, I wasn't I don't know why, but it did surprise me. I did not know it was a musical because I didn't read anything about it when I when I when, when I started, you know, <laughs> but it didn't really it, it kind of surprised me. But then I was like, oh, of course, it's a musical. It's, it's you know, it's, <laughs> it's a you know, whatever. But then my favorite, I think the song that really that I really liked the best was when um, I, I need to fix it or we're going to fix it. You know, and, you know, where he's trying to fix he's trying to fix the robot that broke and his and his, his daughter's fix, singing about their relationship. You know, it had a double meaning there. And I don't know. I just like I like the whole the beat and the actual s lyrics of the song. You know, so I mean, I, I really like that song. Was there any song that stuck out with you? You know, I guess not. I, I like I like the music as well. I'll admit that I'm not usually a musical person, a musical like what to sit down and watch a musical. This one though, the dance routines are so well done and the there's so much to look at visually mm -hmm. with the costumes. And then seeing people able to do that in these costumes too was surprising. I'm like, wow, either these are they, these are not just let's go find some clothes and stick them on people kind of costumes. These were designed to be danced in and yet not look like they are. And so, uh, right, they, they were done. They were done very well, and I'm very happy to see that someone decided, "Gee, let's have high Victorian society clothing it, that that's actually usable in an everyday environment." By like, look, I can do this. This is important. <laughs> <laughs> right, my arms are in the air. I can do a I flip. I don't have yeah. servants to keep me, so I don't have to move from this this right here. This posture must stay because I can't move. So, <laughs> I, I can only lift my teacup this high. But uh, it, it was really, it's really cool to see a more free form Victorian era, I guess. Just it worked. It's worked it, it, from what I'm seeing so far in the show. Um, like I said, I only have gotten to the point where they turned on the robot and then got she got oh, sent okay. to bed. So yeah, so, I'm talking about I was talking about a song later on that, that you haven't seen yet. But it really okay. it, it really got to I liked it a lot. It, it just I don't know. It hit me. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Flop, you got me in the feels. You got me in the feels, flop. man. <laughs> got stabbed by a song. I'm gonna remember that. I'm gonna I'm gonna use it against you later. I'm <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I I think I I agree with Jack as well. Um, I we tend to stay away from musicals in this household because they're yeah. I know Erica hates them. <laughs> yeah, she 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 really does, and usually for good reason. Uh, <laughs> uh, the songs are very sort of milk toast, and uh, they're usually singing about their feelings or some inane topic. Um, and this didn't feel like that most of the time. Um, the 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 music was more uh, a little more hip hop, a little more mm -hmm. uh, influenced by by black music, African-American music, jazz, rock and roll, all the good stuff instead of <laughs> white people music. I, I hate to lay it down like that, but, you know, most musicals, they're very Caucasian. <laughs> yes, yes. That is an interesting way to put it. Uh, this, this felt much I'm assuming more it's because most alive. of the time, other cultures movies are more musical anyway to the point if we have to have it like subgrouped to the side as oh this is going to be a musical because we're going to have music and dancing in it hmm. yes <laughs> it's not a war movie because we're not going to break out into dance in the middle of a war movie which you know would be oh you, have, you haven't seen uh have you seen across the universe i, <laughs> I heard that it's, a, it's a it's a it's a it's a beatles all beatles songs yeah, 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 yeah. 
it's really good. It is really, really good. There's a yeah. couple of war sequences in that. <laughs> but but that, that's also a, a movie Sorry. based around let's 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 do music about you know with like, how do we fit in all these like sequences with the music to go yeah, with but, it. But that you know that's that's it's, yeah. It's basically like watching a bunch of music videos back to back. But there was a yeah. storyline sort of through it. You know, <laughs> while we were watching this, Erica said about the music. It's like it's kind of like Moulin Rouge, but you know more family friendly better i went <laughs> we without the whores <laughs> here we are now entertain us <laughs> so there's the yeah, spoiler i like that movie yeah i like i like moulin rouge i'm so, i do okay that's that's yeah. my dirty little secret i like musicals okay i like musicals <laughs> well, i like moulin rouge too um for a lot of the same reasons it was very colorful very bright a lot of uh, energy, um, and it didn't hurt that I already knew a lot of the music. Yeah, you because know, mm-hmm. they took uh, Baz Luhrmann took a lot of uh, mm-hmm. popular music and made it into what he wanted. Um, right. So, but yeah, yeah, it, it it kind of felt the same way in that it was a very dynamic, high energy uh, soundtrack. Uh, that was fun to watch, even if I wasn't necessarily listening to lyrics. Um, <laughs> well, <clears throat> so anyway, yes, overall, very good movie, right? Yes, yes. We, we like Jingle Jangle. I, 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 it is definitely, I, I, it is definitely a steampunk over. movie. <laughs> yeah. uh, I do have a criticism. Not okay. A terrible criticism. I still recommend it, but. As far as plot and characters go, there were a lot of moving parts. Yes. There were a lot more characters than maybe we needed. Um, <laughs> the storyteller with the two kids at the beginning, that seemed a weird way to start the story and unnecessary. Uh, Geronicus Jangle's uh, assistant. Um, you know the little kid. Uh, yes. Ouch! Edison. I'm okay. <laughs> he really. I forgot he was there until later, just so that Journey could have somebody to talk to. That felt weird. Right. Um, the the mail carrier lady who was the thirstiest character in this movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the mail lady was thirsty, and. Oh, uh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, was, that didn't quite go anywhere. I mean, it, I guess he kind yeah. of relented in the end, but it didn't really go anywhere. You know, with that. <laughs> that's that's what I'm saying. There, there were maybe a few extra gears that didn't need to be in there. That kind of made the it it made it overcomplicated, maybe. The only reason I can think she was there is to is to have something else for him to be grumpy and against. To show how inner, how much he's turned away, and just was just not wanting to be part of anything, you know. Yeah. <laughs> because, he, because of his depression, essentially, you know. <laughs> That's the only reason I can think she was there is just to have him have something else for him to deny, you know, and and pr- show that he you know, he doesn't want any of anything to do with anything, you know. And then near the end, sort of establishing that he's changed, that he's sort of awakened mm-hmm. by. Uh, yeah, you know, exactly. With her and playing with her again, they kind of probably could have done that differently. And oh yeah, I agree. All together. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm being very critical at this point. It was a great movie. I'll watch it again. Um, but a little bit, I feel like I need to watch it again to figure out where all the parts are going. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I mean, it's nice to have someone you can bounce it off of as you're going through it too, as I'm seeing already. Because it's starting like, but you said like there's some of the plot lines don't go anywhere, which is kind of odd that they even were brought in. I guess it's I guess it was there just there for kind of set the showing him that he's just done. Like the you know mm-hmm. having her coming, the male the male woman coming in, just obviously hitting on him to the point of like just shut up and kiss me, and he's just like I'm. 
completely blinded to it. I don't want it. I am I'm a failure. This is this is my life. I'm making this my life. I have lost it all and I'm just exactly what I'm doing. And but, so like mm-hmm. it was it was useful. Another plot as point to, as go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, another yeah, plot yeah. point the, the one white guy in the movie, the banker who's going to take take, take it away from him all take- Jangles uh, shop because he hasn't presented the the toy that's going to make them a bunch of money. Um, and so the banker saying, "Get, we're going to take your your store and everything that you own at Christmas because you haven't provided this thing." And that's supposed to sight of create tension, but it doesn't work. Like Jonicus is just like, "Well, okay." I'll start packing my book on stuff. Yeah. So exactly. it, it never creates this, you know, we got to save anything. I mean, in my head, it sort of does, but none of the characters seem that concerned. Mm-hmm. Particularly Jeronicus. He's just like, okay, I'm bad, but I'm packing the boxes. And Yeah, that's yeah. just a show, once again, that he's just given up. He just doesn't care anymore about anything um, in the long run. I think I mean that's my that's my opinion of that but like you know like like Jack was saying he has something to bounce it off of my cats they were not interested they did not watch it with me they were <laughs> totally ignored it they didn't they didn't have any opinions whatsoever other than that nah. so <laughs> so it was just me watching it by myself not enough cat appeal yep no cat appeal that's that's what that's my that's my criticism the, the cats didn't care even though all the shiny stuff jumping around they didn't they didn't care <laughs> Okay, that that was my one real like my criticism that I wanted to s- s- lay out there. So we're 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 not oh, just oh, oh, criticism is not a bad criticism to have, honestly, because it shows that there probably was a lot more written for a plot, and they had to cut a lot due to the oh. fact that it was a miniseries. Which I don't know why they just don't do more miniseries these days. I'm always for let's have a three part movie. Okay. Let's do that. I'm happy with right? that. I mean, they're, yeah, they don't. It's not like they have to worry about you know commercial breaks or anything like that. They can do whatever they want with their time period. You know? We don't, we, or just, or just give me the direct. We don't have any director's cuts anymore. I'm so tired of not having director's cuts. <laughs> I want an hour Dune director's cut for the next movie. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> Release the Forrest Whitaker cut. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I can't get enough key and peel. I, I, I did not know. I did not know that Forrest Whitaker, Whitaker could sing. I don't know if I've ever heard him sing before. I don't know. Last thing I saw him in was Star Wars: uh, Rogue One. I'm just like, oh, yeah, it was a com- completely different character. <laughs> completely Wasn't different he character. In the, uh, Black Panther. Yeah, he was. Okay, so he didn't sing in that either. <laughs> and in both of those movies, he's like tired. Yeah, and he doesn't move around yeah. a lot, which is what I, I thought. Like, dance or sing? Yeah, I honestly thought he was a lot older than he was. Seeing seeing Whitaker in this movie, I'm just like, oh, I mean, he is older, but he's not nearly as tired, like you said. <laughs> right. He plays tired very well. I'm, ex- <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> I think he, I think he's all. He's, he's a very good actor. I mean, I've seen him in every movie I've seen him, and he's been very good. He's he's he. I don't. He's not talked about as often as like some of the other people, like um, Samuel L. Jackson or or Florence Fishburne or anything. He's he, he, I don't. He's not out there as much. But even though he's in a lot of movies, and he's a very damn good actor, so yeah. I, I don't understand. Maybe this will help <laughs> him uh, break out of his his type right maybe but, I mean, but if even star wars didn't do it i don't know what <laughs> you know I mean, I mean samuel jackson was in star wars and he's he's out there you know yep 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 but it's just it's that's just i don't know he's a very good i mean i remember him in way back in good morning vietnam with uh robin williams <laughs> remember that old movie oh yeah <laughs> who's in that it's been so long since yeah. i watched it <laughs> But anyway, wow, yeah, it's all right. It's we're almost about good. this movie. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, and and that's that we keep referring to it as a steampunk movie, and I'm not mm-hmm. arguing that is uh, that it is. It it it's definitely that's why we're talking about it. But it doesn't 
it doesn't try to be a steampunk movie. No. They didn't they didn't come together and say, let's make a movie that those steampunks are gonna like. That Morgan Freeman's because, another one. Because Sorry. it seems like every time somebody makes a quote steampunk movie to capitalize on steampunk, they suck. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I know it, forget it, it, it yeah. being mm-hmm. so blunt, but I'm glad they're not telling everybody it is a steam it's not marketed create, as a steampunk movie. Create a steampunk movie. You're, you're automatically probably going to make a stinky movie, but they made a they made a Christmas movie that's got with a steampunk aesthetic, magical toys that are very um, clockwork in the chocolate factory kind of mm-hmm. you know yeah. weird and geared it's and movement and blinky light. Like, it's not like this is this is obviously someone's bad trip movie that they dreamed up and was able to write down <laughs> um, and this one was not this one was very you know it wasn't just random it had it has very the world in itself has very good rules it's very well written the world is very well fleshed out there are every character has feels like they have a name they have a reason to be there except for the three dancers with the with the the male Male, male man woman which i think was fun. fantastic they, they were hilarious yeah. and the fact that it's like she hired they were hilarious them her point because even like i was thinking they were supposed to be maybe there in a metaphysical sense like to just back up the musical but the fact that the force like, 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 where did these people come from it's like it's like a flash mob you know like one of those flash yeah. mob kind of thing you know? it, was like, it was like she's been trying to get his attention for years to the point of she's like I'll hire you. I just need you to sneak into this guy's office and wait till I come in and we're going to do this thing. And they're like, <laughs> wait, I look mean, for your cue. <laughs> <laughs> and then even DeForest Wigger was like, where did you guys come from? This is weird. This is getting weird now. <laughs> but even, well, later on, he, I mean, well, I don't know if you got, you haven't maybe got, you got to that far. Later on, he sees them again. He goes, oh, they really are a group, you know, kind of thing. So <laughs> <laughs> I think, the, the fact that everybody has their role to play and their character, except those three, and they make a point of pointing out <laughs> that's that's what makes that funny. That's exactly. That <laughs> but point being, <laughs> that, they that was their a, purpose. They made a fun Christmas movie for kids, and they loved steampunk, and so they created this this world. But not to pander to us. It it doesn't feel like a no. pandering movie, um, and that's I think what's m- part of what made it really good. Yeah. There, that's the last thing I had to say. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> I, I totally agree. I mean, yeah, we we may need a I don't know, got to watch it again just for fashion advice. You know, <laughs> get get some of those. I know that we got to watch it. Advice. Well, I got to finish it first. Oh yeah, there you go. I'm done here. I'm finishing it over there. I mean, I I move my chair around the corner here and sit and watch the the movie. Perfect. Talk about it. So, (sighs) perfect. Yeah, we gave like there were spoilers. I'm sorry about that, but you'll still enjoy it even without the spoilers. Spoilers. I'm gonna forgive the moment I get up here. I'm like a goldfish when it comes to movies. Yeah, take take another take another shot of your vodka. That should help, right? (laughs) (laughs) All right. Oh wow, oh, man. man! We talked about wow. It's a, it's a, we're at fifty eight minutes. Um, well, minus so what did you guys think about, about it? Early. Please tell us in the comments below. We'd love to hear it. Yeah, and those for those of you who are watch who are listening to us later on in our audio feed, yes, it is jingle jangle. Um, watch it, or if you already watched it, let us know how you liked it. You know, maybe they'll make more. Maybe another one next year. Who knows? Probably not, <laughs> but you never know. Um, yeah, and if you have any comments, you know. Facebook is the best place to find us. Uh, criticisms, uh, go ahead and go to go to, <laughs> go to Twitter for criticisms, <laughs> please. I mean, you can put all your criticisms you want on the Steam Chest uh, YouTube comments. I will read every single one. There of you go. Them. I'll <laughs> How about constru- constructive constructive criticisms? Would be even better. I, I <laughs> but, others, but I will. But I will. I will. I will talk back. <laughs> It's like, oh no, you didn't. Oh no, that kind of like that. <laughs> YouTube counts any comment as a plus. <laughs> oh, okay, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense then. Yes. Don't curse in it though. That is the problem. That is the thing. I do have. I do have. No cursing. <laughs> but uh, so be constructive with your criticisms. 
Hey, we just added to your. You just been added to the watch list. (laughs) I hope you like it. Nice. Yes, you get to you get to see our 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 ugly faces. Or or you're watching us live right now, so (laughs) you already see it. Nick is going to add the movie to his watch list, not you. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm sorry. Duh. My bad. I'm not paying attention. <laughs> how, much beer, how much alcohol is in this beer? Anyways. <laughs> oh, well, in that case, I get to save my homework for next time. <laughs> I actually now have two in the bank. <laughs> yeah, oh, so, yes, so once again, thank you for listening. First of December or something. Second of December beginning of the month yep so uh, we're gonna get christmasy yep oh boy christmasy. Christmas christmas season season we are. Get. yeah we, we jumped we jumped the gun this is a very christmas christmas movie um but it was good it was fun and like i said we are we are being current because <laughs> it's uh it just started it just came up <laughs> current event and, uh, yeah so we highly highly recommend like i said i've seen already seen everybody on the different steampunk feeds and facebook recommending it um, so we, you can add us to that list. We recommend it. Uh-huh. Um, I don't. So there you go. Scored uh, hundred percent on rotten think, tomatoes. Ooh, ooh, that's that's, that's very rare. Hundred percent. <laughs> that's tomatoes. almost. That's, that is very rare. <laughs> they don't like anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just wait, just wait. Someone will find something. Of course. That mail scene so, was yeah, a little wrong. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you talk about the mm-hmm. mistletoe. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> okay. Texas Steampunk Connection at gmail.com. If you have any long d- dissertation you want to send us, <laughs> I'll read it if you send it to me. Um, that is our email address. Uh, like I said, otherwise, Facebook is the best place to, to f- get our attention. You can either get on, on Texas Steampunk Connection on Facebook or you can go to Steam Chess on Facebook to as well you know um if you if you have something directly to jack anybody else it's me and and here, um sex over there what's that come Ooh, here tell us your face <laughs> nobody wants to talk to me either uh well rita <laughs> likes us you know because she's our loyal listener <laughs> thanks rita thanks rita <laughs> and say hi to you say hi to, say hi to lawrence for us say hi back <laughs> and uh thank you thank you mick is, is Mick one of your friends, Jack? Do you know Mick? Yes. Yeah, actually, he's a, okay. he also works with us on Steam Chest. He's one of our uh, one of our purchasers. Like we oh, purchased okay, perfect. Purchase. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's great. Ah, so I guess that'll wrap it up for us. Uh, so thank you again, and until next time, mind your mind gauges. Your gauges. <laughs>